Hi friends, welcome to my channel EZT and today we are going to talk about top thing, 10 things you need to consider while buying a smartphone. Let's jump into it. So when you are buying a smartphone, the first thing that I would always ask anyone is to consider the budget. So your budget, uh, I would say not, it should not be strictly restricted. So first thing is you need to have a range for your budget that is strictly what you need to consider while uh, buying a smartphone and the next thing is uh, when we consider is the processor so I just wanted to clear out this thing that uh, many people are confused right now that as to which processor is uh, good for your phone but uh, this is slightly a myth kind of thing that we have uh, in uh, scene is that the faster the processor the better the phone is I mean in general that is true but till what extent is it faster than the other processors that you're talking about so nowadays we see a lot of processors a lot of variety of processors but usually if you see the spec right the specifications and uh, you won't find much of a difference in the speeds or the features that they offer so in terms of just speed, I wouldn't say there would be much difference between some of the top uh, flagship process and some of the uh, budget uh, process. So if you're really held bound on to the spec, then I would suggest that you go for a processor which has a higher number. Let's say for Snapdragon, we'll say that uh, Snapdragon 845, 800 series is better than the 600 series and 600 series is better than the 400 series and even within uh, 600 series the higher the number let's say 660 is uh, better than 630 670 is better than 660 similarly 845 is better than 835 or 825 if you go towards uh, other companies like uh, mediatek so p70 processor is better than the p60 or p30 processor and then on the honor side we have the high silicon uh, kirin 970, 980, 990 will be the next one. So similarly, uh, the higher the number, the processor is better. But there are other things I need to consider. See, whenever uh, uh, when you talk about processor, right, it's just just not the processor that comes along with it. There are other bunch of stuff that come along with it, like the GPU. So uh, GPU is really important from the point of view, let's say for camera applications, video applications, gaming, and uh, in general applications. So uh, it's not always that your processor will be 100% uh, be included or be the one who is performing all the background tasks. Uh, the smart algorithms that nowadays the phones are incorporating, they make use of GPUs as well to make the phones perform faster. So it is this combination of CPU and GPU that you need to consider. Another thing that most people usually don't uh, consider is the modem. So the modem is something that is also built in into the processor. You should usually check the upload speed that what is the maximum upload speed it is capable of, what is the maximum download speed it is capable of. Of course, uh, whether it has uh, it supports uh, the dual sim dual sim 4g VOLTE feature is support, supported or not so all these uh, features you need to check because it's not when you say uh, chip right uh, the, that is powering a phone these are the things that usually uh, join along with it 
and uh, even if uh, even the quick charge or the fast charging uh, feature is something that is supported from the processor or from the chip side so processor is not just about the speed it is a lot more than speed you need to consider so i would urge you to really check these things out because these might be the small things that can really uh, be the deciding factor for you in the end okay that's about the processor next third thing is uh, we talk about the ram ram is random access memory and uh, this is a very important uh, thing that you need to consider before buying a phone so uh, generally speaking higher the ram obviously uh, it will help in faster loading of applications your phone is more snappier and uh, your all the the camera video applications multimedia applications work very smoothly that is in a general sense but that only works good when you have a good software that is running on top of it so most of the times in some of the phones that we see is that uh, there is a stock android os and on top of that we have a bloatware or the company's own kind of uh, ui uh, which again occupies some of the other space in the ram itself other than the applications or the services that the uh, stock android is running so what co that causes is the hogging of the ram and sometimes if the software is not properly built even if you have like an 8 gb ram uh, uh, the effective free available uh, ram would be like 2 gb or 2.5 gb or 2 gb so that doesn't make sense so the thing that you need to consider while uh, looking out for ram is what kind of software it has so some of the best software ram os integration as seen is in the one plus uh, phones their uh, software integration along with the android os along with the ram they provide is really good they really have managed to optimize it really good and stock android is always a better option like it's a safe option but in case you want to have a different ui different feel other than your previous one then uh, you could have a look at that even honor and other customers other uh, phones like uh, xiaomi or the other phone other uh, um, companies that are coming up with their own software like the color os and uh, color os em ui mi ui all these are different types of uis that are available but again they are not uh, they are still like moving towards the right direction but i have not say they are fully optimized uh, so it is really important for ram uh, management to your to be good in your phone otherwise uh, you will keep getting android updates and on top of that you will be getting the uh, your phone's uh, ui updates and let's say one year down the line it may not be the same phone the same performance as you had as you had experienced when you had bought it so this is some something that uh, causes the slowing down of the phone as the phone grows old many people they uh, keep asking that you know why does this happen so this is one of the reasons there are other reasons also but this is one of the major reasons to consider okay that's about ram so these are the top 3 things that i would uh, really consider these really should be a deal breaker uh, between let's say a phone which i already thought in mind and another phone that looks really good with other specifications that you like but these things might help make things clearer next we go on to the other important thing and it is very obvious is the battery so one thing you need to note is that uh, nowadays the batteries are becoming thinner and thinner and the capacity they are packing is also more but uh, again uh, let's say if you want a really good um, battery then uh, the phone would get bulkier so it's like it it will again come down to how you feel how you how you feel the smartphone in your while operating it so battery is important but till what extent so let's say there are some phones which have like 3500 uh, milliamp hour and they still are able to maintain a weight of around less than 200 grams so that is really good and there are some phones that have that pack like 5000 mah battery and they are really bulky so it depends upon your use uh, what is your priority so battery is something that i really keep it 
open internet it's up to the user as to how much uh, he he makes use of his phone so that is about battery and the next thing we come to is camera so usually what people generally uh, think while buying a smartphone is they think of the cameras and first and instead of any other thing so they'll really be go, going for this camera like uh, how much resolution is it how many cameras do they have what is the selfie camera resolution so but for me this is like ranked at like fifth or sixth in my list because if the top three are not good even if your camera is like superb quality it is not going to make sense for your phone to have those cameras only when these top three things like the hardware the os the software are really good really synced up then only having a good camera makes sense is what i think so again resolution is something that again i keep saying that it's not really important for me because uh, when we click photos right uh, and we see it on our phones we might click a 16 megapixel uh, photo and we might click a 24 megapixel photo you see the same photo on your phone until and unless you will zoom into it really like uh, 10 times or 20 times you won't be able to see the difference and i don't think that you know most of us would like really zoom into the photos and see so you wouldn't find really much difference in terms of the resolution so 16 megapixel 24 megapixel 8 megapixel it doesn't make sense until you are going to project it onto a bigger screens the resolution really does not matter one thing that really matters for me is the aperture the aperture one if uh, nowadays we are having a dual lens setup and pixel is uh, one of the exceptions to it but in case you are having going for a dual lens setup please ensure that one of them has a wide angle uh, lens and it would be great if the selfie camera also has a wide angle lens so what that uh, wide angle lens helps enables you is to capture more of the subject uh, let's say you're trying to capture a landscape or something or you're taking a group selfie it would be easier for you to capture if you have a wide angle lens so aperture is really important for me but uh, google seems to do it away with a single lens so they are exceptional but again uh, not everyone would be thinking of pixel uh, type phone so they usually go for a budget or much lower price so that would be what that is what we are saying in those type of phones a dual lens or a triple lens or a quad lens kind of setup one lens should be minimum wide lens next we go on to is the display okay nowadays we are seeing a lot of variation in the display some have the notch some don't have the notch some have the water drop notch so some have a full screen uh, display so again it's up to you uh, the display again uh, I'd like to say that you know not all the applications would work seamlessly with the display let's say you're going for a notch type of uh, display not all your apps would uh, have that feature in them like uh, let's say you're playing some game but if the game is not suited for a notch type of display it's as good as you know playing a game on a phone which does not have a notch which has a good amount of chin on the top and the bottom so it, again it's a combination of apps and the display but as we are moving forward we are seeing totally uh, bezel less uh, displays coming up more than 90 percent of screen to body ratio when they say screen to body ratio what they mean is the actual amount of screen that you can uh, use to the amount of screen that you cannot use so that is that ratio so it right the more higher the ratio then that means you will get more amount of display to uh, work on so again display but one thing you have to really note is if other display is coming with a uh, gorilla glass protection or any kind of protection that they usually say uh, what we have seen is in budget and uh, mid budget mid premium uh, uh, phones is that they sometimes come with a gorilla glass 3 uh, protection but it's not really good i would suggest you go for a extra layer of uh, tempered glass protection because gorilla glass 3 is 
hardly any um, provides any protection like mild like this level of fall or something like, like mild uh, usage gorilla glass 5 onwards it's uh, pretty much decent 6 or 5 is good but usually people go for temper glass so that is about the display and uh, the ninth uh, eighth uh, is what uh, is the sensors so again this is again a uh, thing that most people do not consider and only when they get the phone they start using they see other people using a different phone is when they realize that oh i don't have this feature in my phone what that feature is essentially a sensor let's say uh, some of the uh, 15k plus or 20k plus phones have uh, an nfc or a ir sensor ir remote sensor to them so these are a small sensors i mean they do not really seem to be a big uh, deal breaker in the starting but when you start using right like uh, nowadays you are seeing a lot of cashless uh, uh, payments going around and so on there there are talks that it will be all nfc based so you would not want to miss on that right like let's say one year down the line this thing uh, actually happens in uh, is implemented in on a wide scale so you would not want to be left out and similar thing is with other sensors like i i, I r remote sensor it's a small thing but very few manufacturers actually go about uh, incorporating them in their products so uh and there are other things like uh, how do uh like the bluetooth sharing or the a uh, wireless uh, charging so wireless charge sharing all these are extra features that you know might be compelling to for you to uh, get interested in so it depends upon your choice again again it comes down to budget if you are willing to pay that amount for the feature that you want yeah. then you can definitely go ahead but some of the sensors like accelerometer gyroscope nfc bluetooth 4.2 or 5.2 what difference these 4.2 5.2 makes is when they are consuming the battery the 5.2 is much more low power kind of protocol and it will really help you maintain your battery levels 4.2 is a uh, previous uh, protocol previous version of the protocol which will not be as efficient as the 5.1 so you know these are small things that you need to really check and you know some of these uh, phones that i've seen in the chinese uh, products they miss out the fm radio i know right i mean who misses out an fm radio right so if it's not there then you cannot i mean you are missing out a very basic thing in your phone right when we get a phone we just assume that it's there but it's important to check if the things that uh, matter uh, most in your daily life are actually there in those phones okay and the last thing is like the call quality i'm not sure if you can really check this out but online reviews if you are going through them but you should really check for the call quality and uh, because that really matters because that is what the phone is uh, mainly uh, used for and uh, yeah that's it there might be some special features from some phones which again you might consider so these are the top 10 things that i would really say to consider top 3 things being the most high priority ones and they could most probably help you in settling your phone but the other features if you want if you are more confused you can have a look at them and they will uh, definitely help you in getting your phone So that's it for this video please let me know if you have any questions you can ping me or you can write in your comments and I'll definitely answer them thank you